Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is AP Physics Chapter 4, Newton's Laws, Video 4. Today's topic is mass and weight. The objectives for today is to know mass is measured through its weight, to understand the relationship between mass and weight, and to understand G varies with location. Mass and weight. Mass is the inertia of a, a body. Mass is the amount of stuff in a body. The greater the mass, the greater the force needed to cause a given acceleration, because inertia is the resistance to change. Weight, on the other hand, is a force, which is vector quantity. Weight is the force exerted on a body by the pull of the Earth that makes the body accelerate downward at 9.8 meters per second every second. Bodies having large mass also have large weight. So a body with mass m will have a weight of magnitude w, w equals mg. That's how mass and weight related in the magnitude. But uh, so magnitude of w of the weight of a body's weight is directly proportional to the mass. The more mass you have, the more weight you have. The weight of the body is a force, a vector quantity. The directional force is the same as g, the acceleration, which is downward at 9.8 meters per second squared. That's why weight is always going downward. So one thing you need to know is the body's weight acts at all the time. It acts on a falling body. It acts on high mass. It acts on any uh, object moving or at rest. Let's take a look at this example. One euro coin was dropped from rest from the leaning tower of Pisa. If the coin falls freely so that effects of air are negligible, how does the net force on the coin vary as it falls? Well, because the acceleration of a free falling object is constant, so its weight is constant. So there is no change in the net force. G and hence weight is only is only constant on Earth at sea level. So G actually varies with location. Look at over here. Um, even on Earth uh, at sea level, on the top of the mountain chain, it looks a bit different than in the valley. So on Earth, G depends on your altitude. On other planets, gravity will likely to have entirely new value, such as on and on Earth, you weigh differently. Take a look at this picture. This is a mass of one kilogram weighing on Earth, which gives you 9.8 Newtons. You bring the same mass on the Moon, you will have 1.62 Newtons. So their weight is different because the location is different. In both cases, mass does not change, but G and weight changes with location. Measuring mass and weight. So the easiest way to measure mass, as we have done in the lab, is to measure through its weight. We use triple beam balance. Two bodies have the same weight, also must have the same mass. So this is a picture of equal arm balance. That can determine with great precision when the weights of the two bodies are equal, and hence their masses has to be equal. If we have a known value of mass, we can determine the other unknown value of mass using this equal arm balance. But that's on Earth when you have a weight in outer space when there is no gravitational force acting on the body. We can compute a mass as the ratio of force to acceleration. So we talked about this. So this mass is gravitational mass, and this mass we call the inertial mass. As a matter of fact, the two are the same. Let's take a look at another example. A 2.49 times 10 to the 4 Newton Rolls-Royce Phantom traveling in the positive x direction make a fast stop. The x component of the net force acting on it is negative 1.83 times 10 to the 4 Newtons. What is its acceleration? So to find acceleration, we use Newton's second law. Acceleration equals net force divided by mass. So we know the net force, but we don't know the mass. But since we know the weight, 
of the car, we can find mass through its weight. So here is acceleration, Newton's second law. And here is the mass and weight relationship. So we can find mass through its weight by using W over G. We have 2,540 kilograms. If we have the mass, we can find acceleration by using net force divided by mass. So we have negative 7.20 meters per second squared. This negative value actually makes sense because the car is coming to a faster stop. So you must have a force that's resisting the uh, velocity. So the negative sign means acceleration points in the negative direction. This is because the car is stopping. We can also write 7.20 meters per second in terms of g. So acceleration also can be written as negative 0.735 g because negative uh, 0.735 times 9.8 equals to 7.20. And 7.35 is the ratio between the net force and the weight. So we uh, sometimes we use acceleration in terms of g, and that's the number comes from. It's the ratio between the net force and the weight. Let's take a look at a test your understanding. Suppose an astronaut landed on a planet where g is 19.6 meters per second squared. Compared to Earth, would it be easier, harder, or just as Earth for her to walk around? Well, because her weight is doubled, right? So it will be harder for her to walk around. It will be twice. She has to exert twice the effort to walk around. Next question. Would it be easy, harder, or just as easy for her to catch the ball that is moving horizontally. Well, if the object in the move in the horizontally, that does not affect the force. Um, it would be just as easy to catch the ball moving horizontally. This is because the ball's mass is the same as on the Earth. So the horizontal force, the astronaut would have to exert to bring it to stop would also be the same because it's horizontal, remember horizontal and vertical are separate. So the gravity, G, only affect the vertical force, does not affect horizontal force. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.